Hello, um, today we will be reading Red Shoes and an All Might Wrist Watch, Chapter 3. Hero Killer, Stain, had seriously injured pro-hero Ingenium. The news was wild about the story. Hosu City was a train right away. Maybe this was something he could do. A hero killer meant that he was going against those with strong quirks. Quirkless. Maybe he could fly under the radar and find a weakness. It would be a good test before taking on the Yakuza. Mom, he said quietly over dinner. My class is taking a three-day trip to Hosu City next week. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you. Izuku? A three-day trip? What for? Um, to visit the museums there and write some reports. I'm sorry, I totally forgot. His mom sighed, rubbing a hand over her eyes. How much will it cost? She asked. I've got it covered, Mom. Remember, my after-school job will give me enough for it. The relief in her eyes made Izuku cringe with guilt. He hated lying to her. Hosu City was a relatively peaceful place. Ingenium's agency was well, as well as several others appeared to have a good foothold on the crime in the area. Izuku scouted carefully, noting where Ingenium had been attacked, as well as the few other reports he'd found. Some hadn't been attributed to Stain, but all had been heroes dying of to knife wounds. Stain, appear, Stain appeared to prefer dark alleys. Typical. Izuku bit his lip. Looking at where Ingenium had probably been stabbed, the best way to, to watch would be to stake out one alley from above. But, but was that where Stain perched waiting for victims? Or would Stain be on the ground? Citizen, are you alright? Izuku flinched and whirled around. He needed to stay more aware and stop getting surprised by everyone. When he started muttering, he totally lost track of his surroundings. S Sorry, he stuttered. Uh... He stared blankly. If he hadn't just seen the news about Ingenium, he would have assumed it was an ex it was an updated update to the guy's hero look. Ingenium? The hero took a step back. No. That that would be my brother. Crap. Izuku swallowed heavily. I'm sorry. It's awful what happened. Yes. The guy seemed very uncomfortable. Well, I'm on patrol patrol for patrol for my internship. Do you need assistance? Damn it, go down. Internship. Izuku assessed him. There would be there had been a guy during the sports festival engines on his legs, right? That would make sense for Ingenium's brother. I'm so sorry for interrupting. Please continue. Thank you. He bowed. The fact that he was on internship and patrolling in Hosu City was a red flag. Izuku didn't understand how his teachers hadn't picked up on that fact. No doubt the kid was enraged by his brother's permanent injury and wanted revenge. Izuku changed tactics. He unfortunately had already revealed himself, but he could probably shadow the brother pretty easily. Otherwise, the kid wouldn't, would get himself killed. Izuku watched Ingenium's brother from the rooftops. The patrol had been uneventful that evening, but he could see how he kept looking to the alley searching desperately for Stain. 
Some kind of explosion distracted the guy's mentor deeper in the city. Behind them, Izuku heard a faint cry. It could have been a cat or some kind of animal, and Jinnium's brother didn't seem to think so. Izuku held his breath as, instead of following his mentor, the kid rolled away and sprinted towards an alley one block back, while his mentor set off towards the explosions. He followed on the rooftops above, pulling on his mask. Below him, a hero was already slumped against the wall. Stain was standing there. He couldn't tell if he was dead or not. The boy ran up and started shouting at Stain. Izuku began creeping down the fire escape. If he was slow and quiet, he could sneak up and try to and try for a silent takedown. He saw the glint of a blade behind Stain's back and changed his mind. He didn't have enough time for stealth. Izuku chopped straight on top of the villain. The impact nearly took his breath away. Stain didn't seem too phased, however, and shoved Izuku off of him before he could grab his hands or even try to restrain him. The false hero brought back up? I... No, who are you? Get out of here. This isn't your fight. Izuku grit his teeth and stabbed Stain in the ankle before rolling away to get more distance. He really should have, should make Eraserhead teach him how to use his capture scarf. That would be, that would come in handy right now. Stain yelled and stumbled a bit, a little. But his grip didn't change on his blades. Izuku look where, looked warily at them, glinting in the moonlight. He had a lot of sharp points on him. Leave him alone, Izuku growled. Without warning, Stain darted past him for the UA kid. Izuku didn't react fast enough, as one of Stain's blades slid into the kid's forearm and twisted before it was violently pulled out. No. He took a few steps back, towards them, but stopped as Stain looked at him. Child, what are you here for? He lifted the dripping blade to his lips and licked it. Izuku watched as Ingenium's brother gave a choking cry and fell over. He seemed paralyzed. Paralysis by ingesting blood, Izuku thought about the blood quirks he knew about. Most of them were affected by blood type. Sometimes, oddly, they also were impacted by the moon. He was outmatched. Izuku reached for his phone and left and felt pieces. He must have landed on it after he jumped. He could see a cell phone on the ground near the kid. Another explosion rocked the city. Izuku took advantage of this distraction as Stan turned away to drop to the ground and grab the phone with his other hand. He put pressure on the UK UA kid's arm. Stain turned back leaving Izuku unable to look at the phone. He needed to stall. Why would you kill a kid? He asked. I know you're, you're killing heroes, but he's barely in high school. In high school to become a hero. Stain's wide mouth curved into a sneer. You know why he's here? Not because he's being a hero. He's here for revenge. How is that heroic? He deserves to die just as his brother did. I won't let you kill him. It's not right, little one. Stain looked at him thoughtfully. You're quite the hero in your own right, aren't you? But not corrupted like these. You don't need to die tonight. Don't get in my way. Izuku changed, changed tactics. I don't want to die, he whispered. Stain nodded at him. That's right, leave, and don't tell anyone, and live your life. He didn't point out the logic, the logical fallacy.
that if Stan was letting him go because he was acting heroically, then how was abandoning others to be killed heroic? He slowly nodded and stood, backing up. I, I can't. Please don't make me watch, he whispered. Stain stepped aside, allowing Yuzuku to pass. The second he was past Stain's field of view, and nearly out of the alley, Izuku opened the phone. There was a group chat already up on the screen with any luck. It was his family or his school's chat, both of whom would take the location ping as a sign to get help. Izuku pressed the button, threw the phone to the side, and tackled Stain for the second time. You brat. Stain snarled. As you can know, fucking hell. Sorry, this is gonna take a moment. I'm trying to find my spot. You brat. Stain snarled. Izuku knew he couldn't let go as Stain tried to swing him to the side. He couldn't do much to control Stain's arms, though. And a blade twisted back and stabbed Izuku in the thigh. Izuku had never been stabbed before. It felt like a hard punch that vibrated through his whole body. The pain was enough of a distraction that he lost his grip around Stain's neck and was shoved back into the alley wall and to the ground. He gasped and then closed his eyes as he watched Stain lick the blood. He couldn't move. The other boy was yelling something. Izuku wished his mask had fallen off so he could breathe properly. His chest felt tight. Not bad, kid. Next time, use your knife and go for the killing blow. Stain knelt over him. You could have had me. Why? He breathed. Why do you hate heroes? The man started talking again. Izuku couldn't be bothered to pay attention to his words beyond getting the bare bones of a maniac of a ma- m- maniac searching for true heroism. Heroism. He was too focused on trying desperately to move any part of his body out of the corner of his eye. He could see the phone light up at the end of the alley where he had dropped it. Someone was texting the kid back. Stain finished his speech and hefted his blade, turning to Ingenium's brother. Please, Izuku sobbed, on the half-breath he had remaining, kill me first. That got Stain's attention. Why do you want to die, little hero? he hissed. Don't you want to go on and win the money and trophies that come with our corrupt society? No. Izuku whispered. I can't do that. Stain tilted his head a little. Oh? I'm... I'm quirkless. Then you, more than anyone, should know how corrupt our hero society is and what needs to happen. Not with murder, Izuku said fiercely. He felt his finger twitch a little. The paralysis didn't last too long, though it seemed like the other kid was still down for the count. Nothing else will change how things are. Stain turned away. Uh. Stain turned away, and Izuku knew his chances were up. A great formation of ice suddenly caught Stain up in it. The villain screamed in rage and as he was trapped. Izuku rolled his eyes back, trying to catch, a sl- catch sight of who might have done that. But his body wasn't under his own control. He could feel the tingling in his fingers, though, and focused on that. Ida, are you okay? Par- paralyzed by his quirk, check on the kid, came the terse reply. He felt himself being turned felt himself being turned. The boy's face came into view, 
Fingers reached for his mask and Zuku growled, Get your hands off of me. The half-ice, half-fire boy stopped. Are you injured? The burning pain in his leg was increasing. Only a little. Paralysis is wearing off. The kid went to check on the other two in the alley. Izuku had entirely forgotten about the first hero that Stain had been fighting. He was finally able to move. Izuku clumsily got to his up got his upper arms under him. Easy. The ice fire kid had his hands under Izuku's arms. He tried to accept the help, the accept the help. But everything in him screamed to run away. Hope is on the way, the kid promised. That was the last thing Izuku wanted to hear. If he was taken to the hospital, it was all over. His mom would know he lied. Everything, everything would be revealed. The last drags of the paralysis wore off, and Izuku pushed himself up, up with one leg, and the wall, and the wall as leverage. He could feel blood leaking from the wound in his leg, but his pant leg wasn't soaked, so an artery, artery, hadn't been hit. He should sit down. The ki you should sit down. The kid said flatly. You should look after your friend, Izuku returned. He tried putting a little weight on his leg, and spots rose up in his vision. Crap. This was bad. I don't know who you are, kid, but... You are the kid from the sports festival, right? Endeavor's kid? Izuku watched as the, guys, as the guy flinched back a little, eyes narrowing. What about it? How come you don't use y fire? The guy's stare was cold and hard. Because I don't want anything to do with that man. He snorted. Sure. Blame the old man. If I did that, I would have killed myself a long time ago. What's your deal? Just sit down and wait for the police to get here. Izuku tried to place some weight on his leg and was successful. No passing out. I don't think so. I'm leaving. I could freeze you to the ground. He wished the guy could see him bare his teeth in a snarl. And you owe me for saving your buddy. So back off and let me go. He couldn't waste any more time on conversation. Izuku began hobbling away, the sound of sirens not too far off. The kid didn't stop him. He had to hail a taxi to be able to make it back to his motel. His first aid skills weren't too bad, but, he, but he'd never stitched his leg before. There was no way he was avoiding that. He was pretty sure that... Mm -hmm. He was pretty sure the knife wound was too deep to get away with anything else. By the time he was done, his entire body was covered in, uh, in cold sweat. He tried to make himself drink a few mouthfuls of water, but he nearly threw up the f at the feeling of it hitting his empty stomach. Izuku passed out with the vague thought that at least he had a day to recover before he had to go back home. Notes. This is one of those scenarios that you write in, and then you think about it, and you're not sure. Haha, <laughs> was it necessary? No. Did I want to do it anyway? Well, it may not fit precisely, but I hope it helps shape a picture of where Izuku is in his journey as a vigilante. Definitely not perfect but doing his best and putting on so many masks that he doesn't quite know where to find himself anymore. In parentheses, I love my little sunshine, sunshine child fighting the angst.
That is the end of chapter three of Red Shoes Fighting. Red Shoes and an All Night Wristwatch. Oh fuck. Um. Yep. Bye.